six most disturbing mysteries solved with Google Maps. How do you solve a mystery with Google Maps? By the way, we're live on Twitch. Go follow my Twitch right now, ZarsYT. At around 1 p.m. on November 2nd, 2020, an 83 year old mother of four named Paulette Landriax mysteriously disappeared from her home in Anden, Belgium. At the time, her husband was hanging the laundry up to dry in the garden and didn't notice she was gone until later that afternoon. When Paulette's family realized she was missing, they reported the disappearance to the police, triggering a pretty big search for the missing woman. Though, this wasn't the first time Paulette disappeared, as she reportedly suffered from frequently leave the house at random times of the day and night without telling her husband where she was going. She was known to randomly knock on the neighbor's doors for no apparent reason, and in the years leading up to her disappearance, she no longer recognized her children or her husband. What? Every other time she had disappeared, her husband would find her a few feet away from the house and bring her back inside. But this time, she was nowhere to be found. During the search, 50 police officers and several search and rescue dogs were deployed to the area, along with multiple thermal vision helicopters and an entire fleet of drones. But even with all these resources at their disposal, the local police department failed to find any relevant clues leading to Paulette. After several weeks, the search was called off, and the family assumed that she had fallen into the Meuse River, which ran near her home. In October of 2022, just as the police department was about to close the file, one investigator was searching for Paulette's house on Google Street View, and found something shocking. There, as luck would have it, he found a Street View image of Paulette leaving her home and crossing the street to her neighbor's house. The case was immediately reopened, and police no were once again deployed to the area, where they found that Paulette lying directly below the neighbor's garden. What? After the autopsy was performed, it was determined that the woman had fallen from an unenclosed section of the garden and died shortly after. Her final moments eerily being caught by the passing Google Street View car as she walks to her death, likely in another wave of confused state caused by her. Oh, that One thing okay. that's that hard sense. to understand is how the police failed to see her with their drones and helicopters the first time, but at least now the family can find closure knowing what happened to Paulette, even if it comes with this eerie last image of her ever being seen alive. If you visit the location on Google Maps today, you'll find the image has been overwritten by a more up-to-date view of the town. Mm -hmm. In July 2011, yeah, two bro. armed individuals broke into an empty house in an otherwise peaceful suburb of Oklahoma City. With a house full of valuables for them to steal and nobody there to stop them, the two got to work. But unfortunately for them, the looting spree was much more short-lived than they had hoped. A few minutes later, the homeowner returned and walked in on the two of them looting her house. Ooh. But instead of fleeing with the valuables they had already stolen, they held her at gunpoint as they continued to ransack her home. This That's went on crazy. for over an hour, and during the traumatizing incident, the woman recalled thinking they were going to shoot her before leaving. Fortunately, the robbers eventually left the house without physically harming the woman. After the armed robbery, she refused to reveal her identity to the press out of fear that the thieves would retaliate. The woman later reported the incident to the cops, but with no witnesses and an absence of solid leads, the case eventually went cold and the woman lost hope that the two criminals would ever be found. However, three years later, the case took an unexpected turn. On a day in July 2014, the woman's neighbor was looking at her street using Google Maps Street View when she noticed an image of two men casually strolling down the street who perfectly matched the description the victim had given her of the criminals. What are the chances, Immediately, man? she texted the woman, who confirmed that the two men captured by- So, like, if you're robbing a house, right, and you see a, a, a Google van drops by, you're not gonna run away or duck. I mean, it's too late. I mean, you got a picture of you already. You're cooked. <laughs> but the street view van that happened to be mapping to be out black. the neighborhood what do you mean on the day of that? the robbery were indeed the same two men who had robbed her. Based on the direction they were walking, it seems that the image was captured in the minutes leading up to the crime. Unfortunately, because the two men's faces are obscured by the grainy quality of the image and Google's software that automatically blurs pedestrians, the cops haven't been able to track the men down. Hmm. But with a string of clues and a picture to add to their search, police now have a much better chance of catching the two thanks to Google Maps. One night in October 2006, a 72-year-old man named David Lee Niles met up with a friend at Jake's Bar in Byron Town, Michigan. This was a place that David visited frequently and usually stayed there for at least a couple of hours, but on that particular evening, the story was very different. Earlier that year, David had been diagnosed with cancer, and after a brief conversation with his friend, he left abruptly claiming that he was in a lot of physical pain due to the cancer. That was the last time anyone ever saw him. 
When his family failed to get in touch with him, they reported him missing to the police, leading to a statewide search that ultimately led nowhere as the cops couldn't find any clues as to where David could have gone. In 2011, five years after his disappearance, his family lost hope and accepted the idea that David was gone. The obituary wow. they published online read, David Lee Niles, age 72 of Wyoming, passed away and only God knows the time and place. The case went completely cold until almost a decade later when a new twist shed light on David's disappearance. One morning in November 2015, Brian Houseman, an employee of the Cook Funeral Home in Byron County, was decorating the company Christmas tree outside. When he got to the top of the tree on his lift to put up the star, he noticed something in the adjacent pond that looked like a submerged car. Immediately, he called the police, and using Google Maps from a bird's eye view, they were able to see the same outline wow. that was described. A dive team was deployed to the area, who confirmed that there was in fact a car at the bottom of the pond. Later that morning, a wrecking crew pulled out the vehicle for the police to inspect. Inside the vehicle, the cops found the skeletal remains of a man, along with a wallet belonging to David Lee Niles. Wow. After it was confirmed that the skeletal remains were his, David's family members finally found some closure. Still, the case remains a mystery as it's unknown what exactly happened to him. Was he drunk then? He said he left the bar and then they never seen him again, so I'm pretty sure he was drunk and went into the lake. I'm not making assumptions, dude, but that's just kind of how the ropes tie together a little bit. Even before his cancer diagnosis, David was known to have severe depressive episodes, and things understandably got a lot worse for him after he found out about the illness. With all this in mind, it's possible yeah. that he took his own life, but we'll likely never know for sure. In the 80s and 90s, Joe Aquino Gamino was one of Italy's most wanted gangsters. He operated within a Sicilian mafia clan in Agrigento that was embroiled in a feud with Cosa Nostra, Sicily's main mafia network. He was first arrested in 1984 for murder and various other mafia-related crimes, but was later released shortly after. In 1998, he was arrested again in Barcelona, only- Well, that's like the, the, the GTA uh, prologue, you know, with the snow on both sides and the officers and the one car in the middle. Does this scene kind of remind you of it a little bit? Is that just me? This time, he was sentenced to life in prison. After serving four years of his prison sentence at a prison in Rome, he managed okay. to escape in 2002 during a commotion at the prison. Following his escape, he immediately relocated to a town near Madrid, Spain, and changed his name to Manuel Mormino. Over the 20 years that he was on the run from the police, he got married, worked as a chef at a restaurant called Manu's Kitchen, and even opened up a fruit and vegetable shop called Manu's Garden. Sicilian police searched everywhere for him for years, and they eventually issued a European arrest warrant back in 2014. After carrying out several investigations, the police suspected that Gamino was hiding somewhere in Spain but the way they pinpointed his exact location was pretty out of the ordinary. During the investigation, Sicilian police found that Google Maps had captured a street view image of two men talking outside of Manu's garden. One of the men looked extremely similar to the man they were looking for, but mm -hmm. the cops only confirmed his identity when they came across a listing for Manu's kitchen, the restaurant where Gamino worked. While investigating online, the police found a photo of him dressed in chef's attire on the Facebook page for Manu's kitchen. After confirming his location, the police arrested Joaquino Gamino on December 17, 2022 and extradited him to Sicily where he is currently serving life in prison. Wow. According to the police, when they arrested him, Gamino was extremely confused and even had the nerve to ask how they found him when he hadn't even called his family in 10 years. In 2009, police from Zurich, Insane. Switzerland were carrying out an investigation to shut down illegal operations all over the country. At some point in the investigation, they used Google Earth to locate the addresses of two farmers who they suspected of being part of an illegal operation, and that's when one of the detectives found something interesting. As he was scanning the area on Google Earth, he noticed an unusual change in the pattern of the fields around Rapperswil in the northeastern state of Thurgau. Zooming in, he saw what appeared to be a cannabis plant that measured more than two acres and was hidden inside a cornfield right next to one of the farmer's houses. The Google Earth discovery ultimately led to the arrest of 16 people and the seizure of 1.1 metric as well as 900,000 Swiss cash, which is the equivalent of around $1.1 million. Dang. According to the police report, the ring allegedly sold up to 7 tons of between 2004 and 2008. Well, they was balling, my boy. They were balling. Bringing in from 3 to 10 million francs a year. 
When asked about the breakthrough, the head of police's special narcotics unit, Norbert Glossner, said it was an interesting chance discovery. Since then, the cannabis plantation has been plowed over as recreational continues to be illegal in Switzerland. This incident happened at a home in Derbyshire, England, where David and Rebecca Soans lived with their two children, Lauren and Reuben. In 2009, the family bought a caravan to travel across the country, but it was unfortunately destroyed shortly after when a joyrider crashed into it. A few months later, they bought a new $15,000 caravan to replace the old one, which they left in their driveway. In June of that year, Rebecca came home one day to find the caravan had disappeared, after which she immediately reported the incident to the police. However, with no solid leads, the cops couldn't really do anything about it, and the case went cold pretty quickly. It wasn't until nine months later, in March of 2010, that 11-year-old Ruben Soans found something revealing as he was looking at his house on Google Maps. Using the street view, he found an image of a male intruder on the family's driveway, standing suspiciously outside of his 4x4 vehicle. After a bit of investigating, the family found that the image had been captured by the Google Street View car just moments before the caravan was stolen. Around that time, a neighbor also came forward saying that he had seen the same man towing the caravan on the day of the robbery, but thought that it was a family friend and didn't think it was important to tell the family about it. With such a clear image of the suspect, the Soans thought it would be easy for the cops to solve the crime, but it turned out to be much more difficult than expected to get an unblurred image of the 4x4's license plates from Google. Mm -hmm. Even though the police knew exactly what the thief looked like, it was never publicly confirmed if they managed to track him down or not. Couldn't they actually like tell Google to unblur 